Hi, my name is Michael Caduce, University of Iowa EMS Learning Resource Center Educator. Today, for another video in our Skills video series, we will be discussing bag, valve, mask, ventilations of an apneic patient. Before we begin, I will apply the proper body substance isolation, which includes gloves and eye protection. I will assess responsiveness and breathing of the patient for at least 5 seconds, but no more than 10 seconds. Since I have determined the patient is not breathing, I will request additional resources and advanced life support. Next, I will assess for a carotid pulse for at least 5 seconds, but no more than 10 seconds. Since there is an adequate pulse, I will not have to perform CPR. I will next assess the airway for secretions or obstructions. In this case, the patient's mouth is full of secretions and management of the airway will require suction. I prepare my suction catheter and turn on the suction unit, ensuring there is proper suction pressure. I will insert the rigid suction catheter into the patient's mouth as far as I can see prior to suctioning. I will then apply suction while withdrawing and not exceed suction for more than 15 seconds. Once the oropharynx is clear, I have 30 seconds to begin ventilations with the bag valve mask. I will select the proper technique for opening the patient's airway based on mechanism of injury or presenting condition. I may choose to use the jaw thrust if there is suspected trauma or head tilt chin lift if there is not. Next, I will measure the oropharyngeal airway from the corner of the mouth to the corner of the jaw. Once properly sized, I will place the oropharyngeal airway into the patient's mouth in a manner that does not push the tongue into the airway. I note the absence of a gag reflex and that the oropharyngeal airway is properly placed. In order to deliver ventilations, I will choose the appropriately sized mask and attach it to the bag valve mask device. I will also attach the oxygen tubing from the bag valve mask to the liter flow valve on the regulator and set it to 15 liters per minute. Ensuring a tight seal around the mask, I will apply the mask to the patient's face. To do so, I will use the EC clamp technique where my thumb and index finger make a C to hold the mask to the patient's face and my remaining fingers make an E to bring the patient's face into the airway. I will then deliver ventilations at a rate of one breath every five seconds or approximately 12 breaths per minute. I will watch for chest rise and fall to determine if proper volumes of air are being delivered. After one minute, I will reassess the pulse and if the patient remains apneic, I will continue to deliver ventilations. I need to ensure I am delivering appropriate volumes without ventilating too quickly or forcefully. If no pulse is present, I will begin CPR. If the patient begins to gag on the oropharyngeal airway, I must remove it. I could consider inserting a nasal pharyngeal airway, which is measured from the tip of the nose to the earlobe. The distal tip of the nasal pharyngeal airway will need to be lubricated with a water-soluble lubricant prior to insertion. I will insert the nasal pharyngeal airway with the bevel towards the septum and rotate it as needed for insertion. I will be careful not to force the nasal pharyngeal airway, and if I meet resistance, I will remove the device and try another nair. Airway management with the use of suctioning, positioning, oral pharyngeal airway, nasal pharyngeal airway, and bag mask ventilations is a critical skill for the EMT.